Over the next two years, our reimagining of mission and ministry framework, People and Places, will focus on supporting the establishment of our oversight areas and the flourishing of all our clergy and lay leaders within them. It's a developing journey that we continue on together, involving real discernment for all God is calling us to within our diverse contexts and within God's purposes for us. I want to thank you for your prayerful investment and commitment to our shared journey thus far. This animation helpfully sets out proposed next steps, which have been refined to help guide collaboration, resourcing and conversations within each oversight area, with emphasis on flourishing leaders and teams and the calling of the whole people of God. The work of the area deans has been instrumental in bringing together people to form oversight areas and asking the bishop to sign these into being. As this formation takes place, the bishop will discern who the oversight minister will be. They will be invited to join a learning community led by the Reverend Canon Mark Price, which accompanies their formation, development in theology and practice of oversight ministry. The oversight ministers appointed will then be followed by a locally arranged service of celebration and prayer with opportunity for the parishes within the newly formed oversight area to meet together. The next crucial step on this shared path is supporting these growing and developing inter-parish relationships. Archdeacon Jenny Tomlinson and the Reverend Canon Dr. Mark Price are designing a day where groups of significant parish leaders from within the oversight area will be invited to meet together and explore the culture they seek to create and collaborate within. This time of sharing, mutual learning, reflection on scripture, discernment, prayer and discovery will likely take place at the diocesan offices to allow for the appropriate number of clergy and lay leaders to meet together. Following these discussions, the clergy and lay leaders from your oversight area will then work together with diocesan colleagues who will come and meet with them in the oversight area itself to consider and discern possibilities. They will include understanding the context, missional intentions and resources of the oversight area, led by Andy Windmill, Director of Mission Support and his team, and drawing in other colleagues, for example, from community regeneration or interfaith, depending on the context of the oversight area. The Pathways Learning Resource is also developing to provide specific support for oversight ministers as well as other new kinds of ministry. And Parish Services continues as a people and places resource to enable parish leaders to be released in their ministry and missional priorities. Fostering and enabling leaders through support and learning is threaded throughout the path of the newly emerging oversight areas and continues the people and places impetus for more ministry, not less. As we take these steps through the next two years, they will be frequently reviewed and refined as together we discern our way forward. Speaking personally, I've been so encouraged to see what God is doing already in some of the newly formed oversight areas and how natural collaboration and encouragement of one another is already taking place. The vision is for our new oversight areas to become creative areas for mission within which each parish, worshipping community, school and chaplaincy has an important part to play as in our original image of a feast. Each has something good to bring to the table. Sharing in this table together enables a greater sharing of resources and a greater variety of possibilities in meeting the missional opportunities and challenges where we're placed. I believe that God has set us in a good place for all that the Holy Spirit has yet to do among us and through us.